Thursday. It's Thursday. It's Ghosticles time. It's Ghosticles time. It's Ghosticles time in the city. Oh, or fun. wherever you happen to be. Or in the country. Ghosts are the, everywhere. That's right. In the, in the tunnels. Or the, uh, in we were just watching. Abandoned uh, 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 yeah, uh, mental institutions in the right. middle of nowhere. Why would you put a mental institution in the middle of We were just watching nowhere? videos of people being stupid. It was yes. dash cam videos, but it was just like... I'm gonna go yeah. into this abandoned, um, <laughs> like fucking insane asylum. When you say dash cam videos, you make it sound like not a person is cam, in their GoPro. car driving through a building, not, which would be stupid. It's because I said the wrong word. Uh, what I meant, what I meant, what you meant to say was uh, GoPros. Was GoPros. GoPros, yeah, they have the GoPros, GoPros on their heads. And then they go into stupid places like the Urban Explorer people. And then there were people, they went yeah. into one. And um, it turns out there was somebody there with a cell phone. And they're like, are we going to get robbed? We should probably leave. At least they were smart about it. They did try for a second to try to be like, hello. It's like, no, say, it's though, goodbye. Like, someone that just hangs out in a building in the middle of nowhere on the off chance that an Urban Explorer will come up so they can jump them. Man, that can't but be a see, good return on investment it makes you wonder, though, if gig. it's like closer to Halloween or something where they would expect it. Because... You know, it's not like the signal's going to be great out there, but where are they going to charge it? Depends There's no plan. electricity anywhere. Plan. Well, but now you know, you, get, you can get those little cases that charge it for you and last for a while. I mean, it's not hard for me to imagine um, a teenager, because uh, I would have done this, um, just going out into the woods and be like, this is my space. This is my this is my area. Also stupid. Hanging out there. It probably You should not go into the woods ever, much less by yourself. <laughs> You're it's gonna have to go into the woods at some point in your life. Yep. Nope. Odds nope. are. Nope. Yeah. Well you need to be ready in case you do. I'm not going to. There's so no need for me to go into the fucking woods. We are on a road trip together and our car breaks down and the shortest path to help is through the woods. You're fucked. I'm waiting at the car. But that's not smart. No, it is because we're not taking some stupid route and we're also not going to go where nobody goes. But people would go that way. There's trails in the woods. People go into the woods all the time, Jamie. It's not It's not another planet. I promise you. Some woods. Some woods. There are some woods you shouldn't go into. No. It's, like, it's like neighborhoods. There's good ones and there's dangerous ones. There's... I still don't find your example of me needing to go into the woods... I mean, I did, I did pull it out of my ass, and the odds it's of not, that happening are pretty I slim. just have no reason to go into the woods. A, a you are walking jinxing trail, the shit out of yourself right now. A hiking, now you're I'm going to knock on wood. In the woods. Um, <laughs> you know where that wood came from? The woods. Pro- probably not. <laughs> probably did not. Um, it, it's, I'm just saying, stay out of the woods. It's a terrible idea. That's, you know, we all have our own woods to go through. Right. Hiking. Not, yeah, it, it's not you know, But when I'm talking woods, I'm talking woods. I'm not talking about, you know, you know, a place that has hiking trails. That's not the same thing. It, it is the same thing. I mean, you just mean woods. You, you, you mean by woods, you mean woods with very little like human presence. In yes. Them. Okay. Well, that's a, that's I get that. You probably shouldn't go in there. Right. And if humans have shunned it for hundreds of years, there's probably a good reason. If you are going hiking in the woods, you should not do that shit alone. Oh no, absolutely not. Anyway, I just feel strongly about the woods. Apparently, I feel it is dumber to go into an abandoned building than the woods. Yeah, However, but these motherfuckers went into an abandoned building in the woods. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's double whammy. <laughs> <It's> so stupid. <laughs> And somebody was there with a cell phone. There was what? there was a bunch of there was there was it was stupid on all sides. It was so stupid. There were two sets of stupid people there. But they left. They did. They were like, you know what? They could be trying to rob us, like set us up for a robbery or something. I so. think I want I want the real story to have been that on the other side, it, the person with the phone was like his own was also an urban explorer going, dude, there's someone over there. I know. We hiked all the way right here, here in the woods. We're get for jumped, nothing. and it's like two stupid people scaring the shit out of yeah, each other. We should look for their video next. Do you want to start? Yes, I will okay. start. This uh, submission comes from Carissa. Carissa says, Dear Jamie and Michael, it was an absolute joy to open episode 39 and hear Michael's voice. Oh, thank you. Narrating the tale of the Phantom Highway and our ill-fated road trip. It was a damn good story. Well, and it was also um, as if it had been written for you. It really was perfectly. I was, was like, Michael, perfectly. are you Carissa? I was like, I- <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I just, that's how I wanted to tell my story is I just wanted to submit it to someone else. Yeah. And I do feel like Carissa and I are like somehow writing soulmates. Yeah. Um, 
Anyway, Carissa says, I saw the new episode notification just as I was about to leave the office that evening, and it was the perfect accompaniment to my commute home after sunset. When I arrived home, Ash remarked, it sounds so much creepier to hear him read it out loud, and I experienced it. Oh, I, <laughs> you guys, you're just, you're saying everything right right now. I just want you to know. <laughs> thank you so very much once again for featuring the story, and well, thank you for submitting it, because yeah, it was an awesome, awesome, awesome story. Of course, this left both Ash and I wondering what other tales we might share. We've both had many strange experiences, but could any really compare? Uh, I remarked that we could share the story of the haunting in our current home, but we both laughed at the thought as this ghost is as far from frightening as anything paranormal could hope to be. After our hearty laughter, I realized that a lighthearted tale of a spookless haunt could be a fun diversion in a Ghosticles episode, so off I went to write another snippet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're saying you didn't write this. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I maybe I did, and I just don't know. Maybe that's my story. You are a, you um, are a Gemini. Maybe your one yeah, maybe. side is Michael and the other is Carissa. If, I, I do like the idea of having a, an alter ego named Carissa. Mm -hmm. This is the story. Not an alter ego. The same. <laughs> it was not so alter. <laughs> right. It's just like a companion. <laughs> <laughs> this is the story of the most boring haunting ever. <laughs> I love this. We moved into our little home over nine years ago, a quaint one and a half story brick structure built in 14, uh, 1948, <laughs> 1498. Um, also very old. Very old. Our house is very typical of the post-World War II mindset. A small yard, a few maple trees, and nowhere near enough closet space. Oh, mm -hmm. I feel you. Yeah, I've been in one of those houses, or lived in one of those houses yeah. for years. I lived in one where the hanger wouldn't even... You couldn't fit in a hanger. God. It wasn't deep enough for a hanger. But that was in the that was built in the nineteen teens. Mine, uh, the house I lived in for uh, a decade was built in nineteen fifty three, I believe. Yeah. So it was a very everybody had um, three articles of clothing. Yeah, God, apparently, and my God, good luck getting uh, newer like appliances in because they the mm. house was not designed like no, oh no they were smaller. Yeah, well, yeah. we our kitchen had room. For the refrigerator we bought, for example, but the house was not designed to get that refrigerator through it to the space where it was yeah. ultimately to go. So it was a it was a fucking pain in the ass. We had to rearrange our entire living room just to get the shit through the door. Where was I? About a year after moving Super in. Super very strongly about that. <laughs> and let me just tell you about pocket doors. Oh. Who the fuck invented pocket doors? About a mm. year after moving in, Ash and I had an experience that led us to a detailed discussion of strange occurrences throughout our home. Up until that day, we had both been dismissing anything out of the ordinary as mere, uh, anything out of the ordinary as merely the noises of an old house or the raucous activities of our pets. However, as Ash discovered, I mean, Carissa used the word raucous. I'm starting to think this was I know. me. However, I know. <laughs> however, as Ash discovered, we can no longer blame the felines for the pattern that was emerging. On one Saturday night, uh, one Saturday morning rather, Ash awoke quite early and headed downstairs from our second floor bedroom. The cats were making the usual fuss, impatient for their breakfast. At that time, uh, food and the food and water bowls for, their, for our kitties were arranged in the basement laundry room, which happens to be directly below the kitchen. While dividing up the wet food and setting out bowls for our, uh, for our clowder. <gasps> Do you not know what that word is? I've never. Okay, I didn't write this. I don't know what that word is. Clowder. What's clowder? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't. Maybe. Does it have to do? Is it it's, claw? It, clotter? It's, it's, uh, it's C-L. It's C-L-O-W-D-E-R. Wow. Carissa, you've stumped me. While dividing up the wet food and setting out bowls for our clowder, Ash heard... That's a... I'm going to infer from context that they're talking about the little family of cats. Yeah. Um, a clowder of kittens. Uh, <laughs> Ash heard. It. Ash heard the distinct sound of heavy footsteps walking across the kitchen floor directly above their head. Okay, so far not boring. All of the cats were there with Ash, eager to begin their meal, and Ash logically assumed that I had woken and wandered down to the kitchen to look for a breakfast of my own. Ash finished pampering the cats and headed upstairs, expecting to find me eagerly awaiting coffee and breakfast, and was rather surprised that I was nowhere to be found. In fact, I was still sound asleep in our bed. It was then that Ash returned to our bedroom, tussled me awake, and asked bluntly, "'Were you just downstairs?' "'No,' I replied, groggy and confused. "'Why did you wake me up? I was sleeping.' "'Well, something just walked across the kitchen floor while I was feeding the cats,' Ash insisted." I warily rubbed my eyes and sat up on the edge of the bed, and we began comparing notes. <laughs> so what I would do, I'm like, all right, let's talk about this. As it turned out, we both had witnessed the same repeating phenomenon more than once, but blamed it either on our cats making noise or in, or in consequential things like a flickering light bulb. Turning the page, sorry. Oh. Flickering light bulb. <laughs> flickering light bulb. Uh, or perhaps the wind blowing no noisily. In the end, multiple times over the first year of living there, 
uh, living here, rather, we both noticed it, the sound of footsteps crossing the kitchen, with an occasional bang or clunk like someone setting down a heavy object, followed by a brief rush of cold that mm. vanishes once inside the bathroom. If one of us happens to be in the bathroom at that time, there may be a sudden feeling of anxiety or uneasiness, or a flicker of motion reflected in the, in the mirror, but it vanishes in an instant. Eight years have gone by, and once in a while we still notice the pattern repeating itself. The faint sound remains exactly the same, someone passing through the kitchen, turning the corner, and entering the bathroom. It doesn't interact and hasn't shown the slightest deviation the entire time we've lived here. Of all the interesting reasons for a house to be haunted, we wound up with a, <laughs> we wound up with a one ghost who just really has to pee. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's so good. I love it. Well, I didn't think that was the most boring haunting no, ever. No, that was good. And it's just like, you hear it, and then it's like, oh, okay, the ghost has to pee. All right. Maybe, maybe they died peeing. Mm -hmm. And they're doomed to repeat their trek to the bathroom, like, in perpetuity. Right. It's true. <laughs> it's, it's true. I mean, it seems definitely like it's a uh, residual. We had similar stuff. Where there was always footsteps through uh, the, the house I lived in that was built in 1953, the one with the pocket doors. Mm -hmm. We heard footsteps all the time. I heard yeah. them first and would be like, okay, no one's here. It was 50, so it was probably pure and beam too, huh? A pier and beam. Yeah. Uh, which means you can hear, uh, it's uh -huh. all wood floors. There was not a single room that was carpeted. And, uh, I mean, you could just, you could hear everything all over the house. It's not a very large house. It was only, it was a two bedroom, one bath. Yeah. And um, it was funny. I experienced things for like a year or two first. And it was only, it was only when I was there. So my partner just was like, meh, he wasn't much of a believer anyway. So he just thought, ah, eh, you're just imagining things or you're just full of shit. <laughs> and usually that um <laughs> <laughs> and i was like okay and then i would tra be traveling or i'd like i tended to go to the gym at night and he would mm -hmm. he'd be at home after work and he'd be i'd come home and be like really resentful he's like okay i heard the footsteps and i'm like <laughs> like what the fuck are you looking at me i didn't do it like well yeah. you heard them first what did you do like i'm like no i whatever yeah. So he started hearing stuff. Yeah. Then we hear stuff moving out of the garage and uh -huh. the cat would react to stuff that wasn't there. And this was not a very reactive cat. Do you remember Angus? Yeah, I yeah, do. Yeah, not a very, this cat didn't give a shit about anything. Right. And so for him to react to something, it had to be pretty um, prominent. Significant. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, yeah, and that went on on and off for years. Like every every couple of years in the decade or so that we lived there. Uh, like it seemed like there'd be activity for a few months and then it would stop and then like a couple of years would go by with nothing and then there'd be a time for, you know. Some noise. And every time the, the activity came back, it was a little more intense, a little more varied. Right. Yeah, it was oh, really yeah. weird. Uh, well, and, you know, being in a two-story myself, you know if somebody's upstairs. Yeah. You know, like we were waiting to get started until the girls woke up because they were taking a nap because they didn't get very much sleep last night. Um, but uh, they, when we knew... When they were awake, because you could hear them stand mm -hmm. up and walk, mm -hmm. which is great, because then if you leave them and they're trying to, like, not take a nap <laughs> and you can hear them, it's like, what are you doing? You're supposed to, lying people do not walk around. So, um, yeah, so it's it's very clear when mm -hmm. someone's upstairs walking oh, yeah. around. And you so. know, the, and you, you get to know the sounds of your house mm -hmm, absolutely. pretty quickly. You get yeah. to know the patterns. I'm very sensitive to sounds that don't belong. It's kind of a weird thing with me as brandon comments on it all the time and how funny he thinks that i'll be sitting there oh, and i'll yeah. be like and i'll be like what's that and he's like that's a car going by and i'm like yeah but I, i've never heard that particular car before <laughs> so now, my brain will register car, it he would not know what kind of car that was nope i'm completely and utterly car blind they all look the same to me yeah it's a just, winnebago and a vw bug might as well be the same if they're the same color yeah he can't yeah, tell the difference. Can't. it's really funny he's tried to go to suvs before i don't have an suv I, and he tries to go to true. get an suv it's just such a it's weird white. problem it's to have very Funny. I'm just so car blind. And it's it's really easy to fuck with them about it. Too, it really is. Which I enjoy. <laughs> like you're gonna you're gonna get in that car? <laughs> I have done that. I have gotten in someone else's car before thinking it was my friend's car. Like I yeah. went in, I was a friend <laughs> I'm so I'm just totally deviating, but a friend was driving me to the airport and en route we stopped at the gas station and I ran in to get a drink. And when I came back out, I just got back in the passenger seat and thought, well, where did my friend go? And then my friend was at their car on the other side of the parking lot going, <laughs> Michael, what are you doing? What are you and I'm doing? like, oh, I just sat down in someone else's car who was just coming out of the gas station behind me. And oh, I was like, nice. ha ha, nice car, bye. And I was <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I got the wrong car. It was so embarrassing. Yeah, and the cars could not have looked different if they were 
like different cars. Because <laughs> <laughs> they, they are. They it's are. my kryptonite. It is. It's it's the funniest kryptonite ever. Okay, mine is from Stacy. I'm still trying to listen to every episode in hopes in hopes that I will catch up one day. In the very first Ghosticle, Michael, I'm with you. It sounds like a medical problem, but it makes me laugh at the same time. Jamie asked for nurses and doctors to submit stories. Well, I have one I wanted to submit. I am a registered nurse. However, at the time of this story, I was in nursing school and working as a unit secretary. I worked night shift on labor and delivery at a hospital in Richmond, Virginia, which we've already established. Uh, it's haunted. It's like it is so work. haunted. It's just like, wow, ghosts everywhere. <laughs> it's a very popular place. It's <laughs> like where haunted. ghosts go to retire. It is. It's it like is. the Florida of ghosts. It's, it's the Florida. Yes. But for like Civil War soldiers. Um, <laughs> when I started working there, I remember being told about the hospital's opening. A security guard was doing his nightly rounds and saw a Civil War captain riding a horse through the front of the hospital. I told you Civil War ghosts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was Damn. told... I know. I, can you imagine? <laughs> He's going, okay, all this, right. This guy, these guys have gone too far with their reenactments. <laughs> get out <laughs> of the hospital, like, get the, the horse. horse. With the horse, really? <laughs> I was also told the sec- security guard quit the same night. The stories I can tell you I witnessed firsthand. There were two rooms that the captain liked to stay in on L&D. We tried not to use them unless we were full. I remember one night I felt a strange cold sensation over my arm and neck, and when I looked at my arm, all of the hair on it was standing on end. The captain would also make noises. At times he would howl as if in pain. The med surge floor was on the other side of the L&D doors, and moments later... There would be a code blue called out there. Hmm. One night, a woman was in labor and the captain was being particularly loud. The woman asked, is that lady okay? She sounds like she's in pain. We would try to tell him to be quiet. I know it's hard to think about, but he would also cry whenever we had a fetal demise. Babies dying really upset him a lot. We actually would try to comfort him. Odd to think we comforted a ghost, but we did. Other odd things that happened, we would hear footsteps in the locker room, but no one was there. One night, a wheelchair that was sitting at the end of the hall began to move up the hall towards me on its own and turned into the wall. Night shift nurses in the nursery claimed they saw his shadow move along the wall. After I graduated nursing school, I left L&D, but I will never forget the captain. Also, you and Michael tell, uh, tell about dreams. My grandmother used to visit me in my dreams. She visited me twice. Once was shortly after she passed away. She told me everything was going to be okay and not to be sad and that she was always with me. After her passing, my mom and her two sisters were arguing over estate stuff. My grandmother came to me again and told me that I needed to tell my mom that she needed to stop the bickering and ask them to get along because they are the only family they have left. I moved houses, not because of the dreams, but because I was pregnant and we needed more room. But I wish to this day that she would find my new house and visit me. I miss her so much. I love this podcast so much. Thanks for the entertainment, Stacy. Thank you, Stacy. I love the, I love the, the ghost stories love, from yeah. nurses. From nurses. Well, yeah, they they seem to have, yeah, I, they they seem to be closer to that kind of stuff. Well, and they're generally it's it seems like a particular thing that happens. Like mm-hmm. there, it's so common to hear there is a particular spirit that haunts a particular room, and when this particular thing happens, you know that somebody's going to die or. Something like that happens. Maybe nurses just and and maybe nurses have a just because of their their they're accustomed to death. Right. You know, they see it every day, yeah. multiple oh. times a day in in some cases, and I think maybe that makes them a little more willing or able to kind of accommodate the idea of a ghost. Right. And so they have a relationship with it. They give it a name. They say, oh, that's the captain, whatever. Whereas right. a lot of people would kind of go, it would be at pains to just kind of ignore whatever it is and mm-hmm. not talk about it stuff. But I think nurses just maybe on the whole, nurses just have a very different perspective on it because they're much closer to death than the right. average person. Well, I think too, you have, you know, uh, nurses and doctors, both, you know, a lot of people who work in hospitals are much more sensitive to other people. Yeah. And so they're more likely to, I think to 
see something, experience something yeah. because they're constantly in a state where they are, are, are taking care of other people and waiting to see how other people feel, mm-hmm. trying to, you know, there, there's a level of almost psychic ability well, with nurses kind of have to, to know Yeah, develop a bit of a sixth sense doing, about yeah. like, you know, because a lot of patients aren't able. I mean, most doctors will tell you that like a, a huge part of diagnosis comes from what the patient tells them they're experiencing. And if a patient is not able to do that. Right. Or honest. Um, or honest, you mm-hmm. know, uh, then they have to develop their own kind of, oh, okay, here's, you know, here, yeah, here's what's going to make on. Yeah, guesstimate based upon the information. So but I think it's they not. just naturally, you know, yeah. have, uh, they're either already sensitive and that's why they found themselves in that field or they learned that they got to get that sensitivity right quick if right. they're going to be successful. Just, I mean, and it could be down to instincts, but mm-hmm. those instincts come to play, I think, when you deal with other Most supernatural thing. stuff. Instincts are sharpened if you mm-hmm. exercise them. That's true. Yeah, that's true. That's what they oh, do. Oh, it's a good story. I just think <laughs> the, the wheelchair thing reminded me of the the video. Of I know. The nurse. It was my favorite reaction. It's a, it was a. I think it's a nurse, right? That's. Uh, or an orderly, oh, an orderly uh, like that's that. on the night shift in a hospital, and mm-hmm. like he's uh, filming this wheelchair that's already moved once, and so he's got the camera on it, be like, I need to, and I guess he's on his phone, yeah, and he's like trying to film it, and he's waiting for this wheelchair. This is kind of in the middle of the abandoned at hallway, him. yeah, and he's like, here, come, come, come on, and he's like okay. wanting it to move again because he wants to catch it on camera, and it does, and it's super convincing. But what convinces me most is his reaction. It mm-hmm. is the best, most human and real reaction mm-hmm. because he's like, see, see, no, 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 no. <laughs> He it's like runs off. It's so he's good. so triumphant and happy he got it and he's like fucking done at the and same time done. and i'm like yep that's yeah. a real reaction it's so <laughs> genuine i love it i love it oh my gosh thank you stacy oh, and again thank you, we'll take all of the nurse stories yes and just thank you for being a nurse and yeah thank you all the nurses um, and the doctors and the yes, yes yes all the people that take care of us that's right jessica this comes from jessica um, I didn't just say that name for no reason. Uh, I just like to sh- he sometimes shouts Jessica. <laughs> Jessica! Uh, uh, so these few stories I have aren't very long or exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But I've never been able to explain them. I used to live in an old house with my mother and two siblings after my parents divorced. To help us kids cope with the stress of a new of uh, a new a life in a new home, we adopted a cat. This cat would stare into one room in particular, not staring at anything we could see. It happened mostly at night, but occasionally happened during the day. I'm not convinced cats don't do that just to fuck with us. I mean, I would. (laughs) I would totally do it. I'd always feel this feeling of absolute dread coming out of that room at night and would thoroughly avoid it. I always felt like there was something watching me from the darkness, wanting to leap out. My cat would just stare. It wasn't staring up ahead. Uh, uh, it wasn't staring up at head height, though. It would have. Uh, it would have its head looking almost to the ceiling. Ooh. We got a new television one day, and we put it in that room, and that was the only room big enough to accommodate it. I'd sit there during the day and watch whatever I'd be in the mood for. Now this room wasn't. Uh, now this room wasn't very decorated. We were poor and didn't have much. I remember my mom having these cute little shelves up on the wall. They'd hold little decorative candles and old dusty ceramic ducks. One day, as I was watching the TV from the other side of the room, a candle came flying at me as if somebody had chucked it. I was home alone. I told my mom this when she got home from work, and we tried to simulate how maybe some vibrations from the vents or something turning on our neighbor's car door... Um, uh, what? Wait, I told my mom this when she got home, and we tried to stim- uh, to simulate how maybe some vibrations from the vents, uh, turning on our neighbor's car door, somehow thumping hard enough to, or maybe, okay, I see, either vibrations from the vents or, you know, a neighbor's car door slamming too hard, maybe had, had caused the vibrations that caused oh, this candle to move. Oh, okay. This, um, these are things that would have caused the vibrations. Yeah. yeah. That's a good thing. A good thought, though, to be like, oh, well, you know, could be that, could be that. Um, we couldn't recreate it, though. The next encounter I had was at my dad's house. I ended up moving to his place after my mom and I started having some disagreements and I needed someplace new to stay. My dad and siblings were out for the day and I was getting ready to go to bed when I heard a thump from the basement. Fuck a basement! It's not unusual to hear a small thump as the furnace is old and when it kicks on it sometimes makes noises. Mm -hmm. I attributed the noise to that. While I was brushing my teeth, however, another bang happened. This one was louder but still not concerning. As I stepped out of the bathroom, though, the loudest crash I ever heard came from that basement. The floor underneath me shook, and it felt like the whole house was going to come down around me. That's a uh, that's a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, then there was an eerie. Then there was an eerie quiet. 
I've never experienced a quiet such as that one. I felt like I'd hold my breath, feeling as if there was someone definitely in the house and had knocked something very big over. I ran and got my coat from my bedroom and ran out of the house with no shoes in the dead of winter. I called my dad, crying and begging for them to come home, swearing somebody must be in the house. When my family finally came home, there was nobody there, and not a thing was out of place. I couldn't go into the basement for a long time after that, especially after dark. Uh, now my PC is in the basement, and I work on and I work on it from home. I tend to spend many late nights down here, if, uh, as I am right now. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm like, oh, why are you in the basement, why Jessica? Did you do no. that on purpose. Uh, <laughs> I can say the other, the only other thing I experience down here at night now is the feeling of constantly being watched and the feeling of cold spots surrounding my computer chair. After That's from whatever's watching night. you, right? The cold is. You know, you're probably there right now, listening to this. The cold is so impenetrable mm. that my very strong space heater can't even cut through it. I've learned to ignore whatever this thing is in the hopes of one day it'll just leave me alone. I don't think that's it how it works. It doesn't sound likely. Mm. It doesn't sound likely. <laughs> oh, Jessica, you're probably in the basement right now on your computer listening to this podcast. And I'm, I just have a question. Do you feel it right now? Is it like right there? Is it cold? Have you talked is it, to it? Is it, is it, saying is it anything? really? I'm What's sorry. It? Am I provoked? I don't want to is provoke. I just want to. I'm, I'm nervous. I'm, Not to I'm picturing it. you in this situation and I'm being filled with anxiety. Not to provoke it, but if it's there, if it would like to uh, show Jessica a sign that it's there. Don't. Jamie. Just a little knocky do. Jamie. Just a little knock. No. If you would like to do something very nice for Jessica. That, nice. Yes. Something nice. Yeah. Not too freaky. Not too freaky. Maybe, maybe, maybe not the cold. <laughs> yeah, maybe like warm it up just a little warm bit. Warm it up a little, not yeah, too much. Be, that sounds yeah. like you want to set a fire. Don't do that. We're sorry, yeah. Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> We're so evil. We are not. We are creating content. <laughs> <laughs> These are not mutually exclusive ideas. Okay. Thank you, Jessica, for letting us torture you slightly. Hopefully, slightly. Not. Good luck. Jessica's mm-hmm. like, fuck this. I'm already at the top of my desk. I'm, I'm at the top of the stairs. I'm in the living room now. She's out. See, that's why you shouldn't be in a basement. <laughs> We're just okay. trying to help you get the fuck out of there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next one is for Danielle. From Danielle, not for Dan. This isn't for you, Danielle. This is from you, and we well, appreciate you. Well, we're reading you. it for you. We hope that you. We're listen. reading it for everyone. Yeah, but it's but that includes. But Danielle. mostly Jessica's ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't help myself. Okay. Oh, All right. Oh God. Uh, this submission is from Danielle. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> hey guys. I absolutely love listening to your podcast. It would keep, it's what keeps me going through work. I've been listening for a while and have been debating to send in this story, but I felt the ones I've had were all rather short and didn't know it would be worth it. Then you started talking about aliens, and my mind went to a story I was told, which involves both aliens and a sprinkling of ghosts. So I thought that could be fun. Ooh, yeah. So to preface... This happened to one of my dad's best friends, Scott. He told it after my dad talked about an experience he had with a UFO. Scott's recounted the story a few times, and it has stuck with me because it is so fucking crazy. Scott's uh, recounted this... Oh, wait. I was reading the whole thing. I was just really like that line. It's so fucking crazy. (laughs) I have no reason not to believe him, though. He's always been a very forward and honest guy, and he's told the story many times and always holds true to it. So people can disagree with whether it happened or not, but he definitely believes it did, and so do I. Here we go. Mm -hmm. So this did happen several years ago. Scott had a friend named Bill. Bill would talk about how he knew and was in contact with aliens and would talk to them regularly. Of course, he wouldn't say this to just anyone as to not be deemed crazy. Scott would be supportive and ask questions about them and just feign belief in what Bill was saying. He wouldn't really pay too much mind about it until one day, while Bill was talking about them to Scott, he goes, I've told them about you. (laughs) Oh, really? Yeah, they want to meet you. Scott was a little freaked out, but also (laughs) amused by this notion. (laughs) That's okay. I love where this is going. All right. Just make sure you tell him not to sneak up on me. They'll give me a heart attack. He laughed a little, and they continued talking about other things. A few weeks pass, and Scott is at work. He worked at, he worked as an optician, I believe that's the name, at the time. These are the people who do the air puff tests and operate the machine to look at your eyes at the optometrist. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. I've been to one of those once. 
I go to them all the time. I can see you still, so. I mean, it's a matter of time. <laughs> it's a matter of time. So anyway, he's one of those people. His next patients come in, and they are they are the portrait of a perfect American family. A father, mother, daughter, and son, all perfectly groomed, well-mannered, the whole nine yards. The daughter goes first and sits down at the machine, which I don't remember the name of. He examines her eye, and he can see that her pupil is shaped like a teardrop. Broken irises, what? Cynacea, 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 aren't mm-hmm. a completely uncommon th- thing, but he didn't recall her eye looking like that when she sat down. He looks at her without the machine, and her iris looks completely normal. He asks to look through the machine again, asks her to look through the machine again, wondering if he mistook what he saw, but again, her iris looked like a teardrop. What? He checked the entire the family fuck? and found that this strange phenomena occurred in all of them. He started to think out loud. I just don't understand. And the whole family smiles at him. He noted how unnatural of a smile it was. And the father nodded his head. They went on their way to see the actual optometrist, leaving Scott puzzled. The next time he sees Bill, Scott says, I think I met your friends. Bill? Yeah, they said they liked you. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Oh, uh, I love this. Oh. A, a year or so passes. Bill and Scott are hanging out, and Bill says, Hey, I'm going to be leaving with them soon. What do you mean? My time here is almost done. I have to go with them. I'll be okay, but when the time comes, I want to say goodbye one last time. He took Scott outside and pointed up to the sky. I'll be right there. Bill said, pointing towards the sky. He wrote down a day and time that Scott would have to look. Scott shrugged this off, not wanting to encourage his friend talking about a supposedly near death, and promised that he'd look up there when the day came. Bill passed away within the next year. A few days after the funeral, Scott was sitting at a bar with some friends when he realized what day and time it was. He went outside, and there in the six o'clock sky was a bright dot of light exactly where Bill told him to look. The dot stayed there for a minute and then streaked out of sight. Bill got his goodbye. Scott says he attempted to get a picture, although this was when phones didn't have that great of a camera, but he says you can see the faintest streak on the sky. That's the story. Thank you for reading. Oh, my God. I know it sounds fake, but I wholeheartedly believe him. And I know that the story... He, he doesn't, and I know that this is a story he doesn't spread around much, so I hope it's okay that I shared it. <laughs> oh my God. You shared it. It's out there. When he was telling the story, you could tell just how impacted he was. I first heard this 10 years ago and it has stuck with me. It still gives me a major case of chicken skin. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. I Goosebumps. Love it. It's chicken. I like chicken skin. I don't like it. Why? I just don't like chicken skin. Well, it's, it's, you know. Goosebumps is so less. Do you like goosebumps? It's less offensive to me. <laughs> well, you're easily offended by chicken, chicken skin. skin. More, and I, goose pimples. Uh, I don't like it. Goose pimples are a little gross. That's gross. Oh, what a great story, though. So oh, my good. God. Oh, my God. I Can love that kind of shit. I love that kind of shit. Such a good story. Thank oh. you. Thank you, Danielle. That was an amazing story. Fuck yes. I God, Ugh. what a closer. I know. Damn. I know. Ooh. Ugh. You guys are killing it with these stories. You really are. We are just, loving them. Oh my god, all we have to do is sit back and <laughs> let Read you do them. all the work for us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. So, did you have anything? To, I mean, that was just, that was, I'm, I'm just, just going to sit here I and can't, just like, I mean, can you, first of all, we're going to get visited by the men in black before long <laughs> we keep doing these stories. That's great. We can do a whole episode about the men in black. Ooh, there's an and idea. And then we'll forget all about it. <laughs> um, but luckily, <laughs> kind of like people did the latest movie. Oh, oh. Did they? I heard great things about it. No, it hasn't. I don't think it's we been doing very well. We watched the first one with the girls, and it was, it's really fun. Has it aged well? Yeah, I've not yeah, seen it since it came re- out I forgot. I forgot. I remember really, the really liking it. The best part, though, is you know how, like, at the end, they, like, update the suits? Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're so dated. Whereas, like, the suits they wear originally are so classic. You know what I mean? They They've d- kind of come back in style. Yeah, because it's a classic <laughs> style. It's yeah. just a single-breasted black suit with not too thin of a, of mm-hmm. a lapel. And then, like, they switch it and, you know, they have the, oh, the non-collar 
suits. Oh yeah, like the uh, the collarless suit uh-huh, or whatever uh-huh. it is, and and then it's like, like the mouth. The she's Chandler wearing mouth like a suit. huge double-breasted lady suit, and it's like oh god, date it. That's nineties. That is some nineties <laughs> so shit. 90. But then the other suit was it works now. Oh shit! As I knock things over, uh, Michael just kicked his computer. Sorry, I can't my computer. I'm fine. He's fine. We're I'm all fine. fine. Everybody's fine. fine. Everybody's fine. fine. You're fine. We're fine. The ghosts are fine. Jessica's fine. Hopefully. Oh. Um, <laughs> Bill's fine. That's great. Oh, so good. Thank you guys for listening. Yes. Uh, dot com. <laughs> Check us out on the Twitters and the Instagrams and the T-shirts and the, all the jazz. Yes. And remember, it's, it's okay, okay to, to sleep, sleep with the, the lights, lights on. on. Just not in the basement. Never a bit. Ba- or the forest. Read it like you're gonna read it, Michael. Oh, flaccid microphone stand. That was depressing. It I just won't go into in cemeteries at night. Oh. It's been a long-standing rule of mine. All right, is that it? That's all you're going to give me? You want more? No, I guess that's. I enough. believe spirits. <laughs> okay, all right, it's fine. I believe it's spirits fine. have it's... more power and presence after dark, and that we need to respect it as their time. It's fine. Invading the space, dedicated. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.